the biggest cost factor for developing drugs is actually that they don't work. Yeah. And um, the question is, why don't they work? Uh, sometimes it's a bad choice of biology. Uh, less frequently, it's now an issue with from because of physical chemical properties of the drug. But the major one major reason why drugs fail is because we don't know which patients to treat. Mm. We don't know which patients would actually respond, and that makes that field so complicated. Mm. Um, on the one hand, we can't afford anymore to develop drugs that cost us a billion dollar or roughly now also a billion euros yeah. nowadays actually and take 12 years to develop. On the other hand, um, um, when we push for accelerating drug development and we should talk about that, how to do that, then um, the likelihood that the patient population is smaller mm -hmm. There's also a fact, and that's sort of the, the opportunity of the curse of personalized medicine. Um, it will allow us to develop drugs faster. Mm. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but then it implies that the patient population is small. Um, and so if you, if you kind of stretch that out, if you look at, say, a specific cancer and you keep subdividing therapeutic opportunities and further fragment, fragmenting the opportunity, how are healthcare agencies going to be able to deal with that? How are professionals going to be able to do, uh, deal with the multiplicity of choices that are available? I think no, that this will be interesting. There will be a lot of headaches on all, on all fronts. Uh, the first headache is um, that how do we approve or develop those drugs? Mm -hmm. Because if you are in a situation where a drug works because of certain molecular change, uh, but that change is rare. Mm. You have difficulty finding those patients and then you want to actually include patients who have that same molecular change but maybe a uh, tumor is derived from a different tissue type. Mm. Then you have all of a sudden a clinical trial where you have six patients with colon cancer, two with lung mm. cancer, two with thyroid mm. cancer and then how do you compare this against what? Mm. Because you can't compare this against standard of care or a certain line of treatment in colon cancer and in breast cancer and in thyroid cancer. Therefore, we need to sort of find new ways of actually approving those drugs. Now, if a drug really works well, it's yeah, relatively easy, or the agencies should have the, the guts to actually uh, to a successful drug we can see. Mm. Clinicians can judge. And I think that's the secret may be that we open up as a scientific and clinical and regulatory community towards a situation that we can see and feel a successful drug. And then it's possible because then drug discovery is, and development is fast mm. and then the patient population is clearly defined and with that uh, it costs us less money. So what do you think of, oh, I think it's a bit of like Wild West, the molecular tumor board. You know, you see this a lot in the US where you've got patients being molecularly profiled in depth. You find a novel mutation, minimal evidence that a drug works in that target population, maybe at, at best in vitro data for, for a drug candidate. And then patients are enrolled into clinical trials with very minimal evidence in terms of, of, of utility. Uh, with little backup. Now there's great excitement around it, but in terms of experimentally and in, in, in terms of study design, there must be a flaw there in terms of uh, uh, these approaches. So I'm just wondering about your opinion on, on that particular field. Yeah, I agree. On, it continues to will be, will be a complicated situation because yeah. uh, I think that eventually we will not be able, as a community, to afford the development of companion diagnostics that get approved with a certain drug yeah. product. That's not sustainable. It's not sustainable for biotech companies where the innovation is coming from. It's not sustainable for big pharma either. It's too expensive. And no, no diagnostic company will continue to sort of take that much risk in early development to make such assets unless it's for a lot of money. If I think it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the only possibility is the one that you allude to, which is that we have broader panels 
We are being theory agnostic to a certain medicine or target all patients and then allocate them to different choices in terms of trials. But that, of course, then results in the problem that you articulated, mm -hmm. namely that as cancer continues to be a desperate verdict mm -hmm. for most patients, that a lot of things get tried because of no other options and it makes that picture and the usefulness of this yeah. effort, effort somewhat yeah. cloudy. Yeah. So just stand back a bit, you know, in terms of, we've talked a lot about, you know, I suppose the close to the patient side of personalized medicine, but you stand back and maybe look at the role that basic research has in terms of delivering new opportunities in the cancer field, leading to new th th therapies. Is there still, we've, we've learned a lot over the last two to three decades, is there still much left to be understood in the cancer field? Is there, you know, there's big hype around immunotherapy at the moment. If that really successfully impacts on the clinic, maybe there is no need for these Tar, you know, tar, more target mutation-driven drugs where we have a more generic therapy like immunotherapy. So I'm just wondering, what, 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 what new uncharted territory is there in the cancer field that is untapped? Yeah, I agree. Uh, the progress that we as a community have made over the last 10, 15, 20 years is just astonishing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's incredible and that's so important and we kind of forget that. The impact of basic research on um, the health and the treatment options for patients, especially cancer patients, has been uh, outstanding. Mm -hmm. Now, we're still left with a lot of challenges. And yes, immunotherapy, immuno-oncology is, uh, um, is had a lot of promises. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we need to see the reality that it has big impact on about 10 to 20% yeah. of uh, patients but we still don't understand mm. who those 10 to 20 yeah. patients are. And with personalized medicine and further interrogation of genomics, we will find that mm. out. Mm. Uh, and for the future, I think uh, novel good approaches like immuno-oncology will be paired in combinations with targeted therapy because uh, cancer cannot be treated eventually successfully with only one drug.